In late 2014, AMD wasn't really your go-to CPU manufacturer, especially after Intel released their fourth generation Core i5s. And with the reputation AMD had after the FX CPUs launched, no one could blame people for switching to Intel or not even considering AMD. But for those of you who were hardcore AMD fans, even at their most desperate times, we had some new add-ons to check out in 2014. One of these CPUs was the X4840 a budget-oriented CPU based on a 28 nanometer process, running on the FM2 Plus socket. So after 8 years and some very big improvements regarding game development, let's see if your $170 spent way back in 2014 still can hold up with some of the most modern titles. The GPU for today's testing will be a RX 570 with 4 gigs of VRAM. Maybe not the most ideal candidate to get the most out of the X4840, but still, we can more or less get the add-on to do quite a lot of work and show us if we can maybe handle an even stronger GPU. Before we begin, I wanted to point out an interesting fact about the stock cooler which came with the add-ons. So on the right side, you can see the cooler that's meant to be paired with the quad-core CPU and should be used with the X4840 for gaming purposes. And on the left, we have a socket 754 cooler, which should be paired with a single-core Sempron CPU. So not many words are needed to describe what we see here, except that I don't really trust the right one. We'll be using the Celeron's cooler, which should be fairly easy since they have very similar mounting systems. So with that out of the way, let's begin with the benchmarks. In Cinebench R20, the Atom just barely beat the 2011 second gen i3, which isn't really a great start to say the least, with an i5 from the same generation beating it by quite a bit, so for now, it doesn't really look great for the X4840. Starting off the gaming benchmarks with a very CPU intensive title, the Atom was performing nicely until you reached an area where it was even remotely crowded which basically happens quite a lot in the Mafia remake. The performance was also decreased whenever you were driving a bit faster, so seems like open world games aren't really made for this CPU. Bringing a bit of relief to the Atlon is Doom Eternal, where the RX 570 becomes the main driving force. Nevertheless, the CPU usage never really drops under 90%, despite that, the game was surprisingly playable. In the latest installment of the Assassin's Creed games, we can see the Atom fighting to provide frame rates close to 30, with very bad percentile figures, stutters and fairly frequent freezes. Generally speaking, the Atom isn't really up to the task of running this game at a frame rate which you would consider playable. In yet another very CPU intensive title we can see the add-on struggling, providing horrible frame rates and quite a lot of stutters during the whole benchmark scene. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider, the add-on can deliver decent averages but the frame rate can quite often drop into the mid-twenties, which can't really be considered as a good result. Going back to a time where the CPU was relatively new, The Witcher 3 provides very nice average figures. As we are used to it by now, the percentage figures are really bad, indicating that there is quite a lot of stuttering, which is really apparent in fight scenes. To finish off the benchmark list with quite surprising results, in Cyberpunk we can see the best results of today as the RX 570 was used almost to its full potential, and the average figures are almost the same as with an 11th gen i5, with a few less stutters of course. Overall, this was pretty good performance for such a CPU. 
If you take a look at the specs of the CPU in basically any software and even task manager, the X4 800 series will be presented to you as a dual core with 4 threads, which they basically actually are, which is down to the architecture these CPUs follow and the way they are designed. Basically the way the FX CPUs were designed. And the main reason they were so bad. Although they were promoted as quad-core CPUs, you were basically getting a similar layout as the i3s from that time. Minus the fact that the i3s were miles ahead in terms of performance. On its own, the CPU isn't terrible and maybe would have presented a decent competition to Intel, but only if it was released in 2011 or so. That's why in the next video I will be comparing the X4840 with the 2011 i3, the same one which the Atom just barely beat in the Cinebench test. I hope you enjoyed this trip back to a time where AMD wasn't nearly as good as it is today. So for the end, I can only say that you should really stay away from any of these pre-built systems still featuring these CPUs. Just save your money and get a Ryzen system instead.